Hello, calculus fans. Okay, so let's take this function, f of x equals x plus 3 over 2 minus x, and let's find a formula for f prime of x. And then we'll also answer a question about the domain. All right, so anytime we have a question about what is the derivative, then we're going to go ahead and use the definition. All right, so same story. The definition of the derivative looks like this. And we're going to go ahead and plug in these values and see what we get and try to simplify that limit. All right, so we get a bit of a complicated expression up in, up in the numerator. Notice that if we plug in x plus h into this thing, that means everywhere we see the x, we have to replace it with x plus h. And so that's what you see here. And then we're going to subtract off f of x so we can just get this expression. Now, we're going to have to do a little bit of algebra. Now, the algebra is not particularly difficult, but it requires us to keep together a lot of the bookkeeping very carefully. So when you write these out, you really want to take the time to make sure that your algebra is good. Remember what our goal is. Our goal is to try to find an h that can cancel this guy out. If we can't do that, then something has gone wrong. Okay, we just distribute the minus in the bottom here for this guy. And now we've got the important step where we're going to find common denominators up in the top. So notice that our common denominator is 2 minus x minus h times 2 minus x. And so you can see the pieces that we put in to make that common denominator. We've got this that we had to put in and this that we put in. Okay? And so you can see what was there. It was this piece and that was here and this piece and that was here. All right, so you should be able to see all the, all the pieces. All right, so all we're doing is making common denominators. Yes, it's true, this is a bit of a long expression, but it really isn't that difficult to deal with. Okay, so now we're going to multiply out these expressions, like this and this. All right, so I'm not going to take the time to go through the details on that. You should probably write it out and make sure that it really matches out with this and this. So you're just dis doing a distribution or some kind of a giant foil in a way. And we're going to try to combine everything that we see here. So we've got everything with a common denominator. So let's write it now as a single fraction. And when I say a single fraction, it's a fraction inside of a fraction. We still have the h that's in the bottom down here. Okay? So the minus sign that you see here has to get distributed to all six of these terms. And so you should see that the signs got changed for all six of these terms. So at this point, we have this giant fraction. And we're going to try to go ahead and simplify it. Now before we do that, let's instead of having a fraction within a fraction, let's think of this denominator down here as being h over 1. And then we can kind of combine everything into one single fraction. It'll look like this. So now we don't have this issue of a fraction within a fraction. OK, now let's look for some cancellation. And I think there's quite a lot in here that can cancel. So let's start crossing stuff out. So x squared. And then let's see what else we've got. We've got a 2x. We've also got a 3x. The 6 goes. Boy, everything, everything in here cancels. Uh, we've also got the xh that cancels. There's hardly anything left. Now let's see what's left over. We just have this 2h and the 3h. That's the only thing that didn't get canceled out. So now the whole fraction looks much easier. Now we have just 5h in the top. And this is, a, this is a good thing, because this produces the h that we need to cancel with the h that's down uh, in the denominator. That's what we want right there. So finally, we're in a good position. We have an expression where there's no h in the bottom that's going to cause us trouble. So at this point, we can use the direct substitution property, because what you see here is a rational function, thinking of h as the variable that we're going to be plugging in. So we can go ahead and just plug in h equals 0. And if we do that, we get our final answer, which is going to be 5 over 2 minus x squared. All right, so we've done the calculation to get the derivative. Let's think about the domain. 
So you should look at this and say, well, what is, what, where does this not exist? And it would not exist when x is equal to 2. So here's what we'll say. We'll say that the derivative ex exists everywhere except x equals 2. So the domain of f of x is this union of intervals from minus infinity to 2 and 2 to infinity. It's all real numbers except 2. Okay, that's all for now.